both players playing the Blacephalon, uh, kind of baby Blacephalon as it's known, non-GX uh, deck. Not really a, a matchup that you really want to play at such a high leverage position, but both these players have definitely practiced the mirror. They are definitely prepared. We can go into talking about Michael Pramawat on your left, of course, one of the most accomplished players in the world throughout multiple eras of the game just one of the most amazing players the game has ever seen who has the most regional championship victories as well as of course an international victory in 2017 and the heartbreaking loss in the finals of worlds 2010 yeah forever immortalized in the picture of him just holding his head up and hands on the table the, the, the pram as we <laughs> call it just what just such an emotional uh such an emotional point for Pram, but of course, second place in the World Championships is still a lot of further than other people have gotten. It's one of the best accomplishments you can have in this game. And his opponent is Andrew Mahone, 2017 regional finalist, 2015 World's Top 16 with a heartbreaking ninth place, 2015 regional championship champion. And of course, he has a top eight at the North American International Championship in 2017. So an accomplished player in his own right. Of course, one of the greatest content creators this game has ever seen. And Jeremy, these two players are going into a welder mirror match, trying to stay alive in this tournament. Yeah, I'm expecting a fast one. Uh, whoever really draws welder first and gets those key attacks off. And if you're able to keep the momentum going, a lot of times yes. with these decks, uh, stuff like Cramorant V, you'll discard your energy, or even just discarding your energy with uh, Fireball Circus. You're going to need to set that up as well as recharge your next attacker because your opponent's going to do the same thing. Absolutely. We can get right into this game now. Michael Pramawat versus Andrew Mahone playing for their tournament lives. One really interesting thing to note is that uh, despite these players playing a mirror match, Michael Pramawat's list is actually a little bit different. Um, it's a list that uh, Kyle Sukovich played in one of the online tournaments. It's much, it's it, honestly, it's much less um, consistency focused and giving yourself a lot more options. Right, we're seeing we're seeing the beast energy. We're not seeing the, the biggest thing is we're seeing no scoop up net out of Pram. So I'm really interested to see if you know we've been talking about how you need to rebuild, how you need to keep the momentum going, and I think that Andrew Mahone just has such a better um, is just so better able to keep that momentum going yeah uh mahone definitely has a lot of just redundant cards in his deck fire crystal uh, gets three energy from the discard well energy retrieval gets two plays eight of those cards four fiery flint so you know his game plan is going to be the same every time and he's just relying on his setup pokemon to get him there and we see here Starting with that Zacian V, Intrepid Sword is probably the best turn one you can ask for. Uh, Andrew not having a Welder in hand, though, that could be problematic going forward. Yeah, you do you do like to go second in this matchup generally, um, as oh, you see. But meanwhile, uh, we have uh, Pram opening up with a Welder straight out of the gates, charging up that Victini V. Yep, and wow, we well, we're gonna see this yeah. uh, this active Zashi this is, just get kind of punished here. This is what you usually see when you come up against something like an Arceus Dialga Palkia Zashian deck, but no, uh, taking full advantage of that fire weakness and having that Victini V to be able to energy burst and take the knockout. What a big two prize swing in this single prize attacker matchup. Yeah, that was huge. And fortunately, uh, fortunately for Andrew, you know, he's having to he did get his two prizer knocked out, but at least it was by another two prizer on Pram side. So, you know, uh, Andrew can kind of try to keep the prize exchange even here. Yeah. And a way to do, do that is by top decking Welder. And that's exactly what he did. Uh, drawing that Welder gets the two energy on the Blacephalon and we'll just see him keep spinning this turn with all of the cards in his hand. We do see the Heat Factory, of course, found off of the Stellar Wish. Here's the Fire Crystal. There's four energy. Doesn't even need to play the Heat Factory. Just saying, I you know I don't want to uh, I don't want to let you draw cards. We're playing the same exact. We're playing the same exact deck, of course. Yeah, uh, the whenever you actually decide to play the Heat Factory Prism, uh, it's basically like I need to hit something this turn because the benefit it gives your opponent is detrimental it's just so overwhelming 
And we're seeing, uh, we're also seeing Andrew not play the Oracorio GX, just saying, I don't want to expose another two prizer quite yet. We'll probably end up playing it, but I would rather just make Pram kind of fight a fair game. And speaking of Oracorio GX, I was on the other side of Pram. We're immediately seeing that dance, dance of tribute there. Three yeah, the card. unfortunate thing, though, uh, with the Victini V going down uh, and the Oracorio GX in play, uh, that's two, two prize Pokemon that are easy access for andrew we so do see the mirror breaker wrong. here the tapu fini uh, i believe both players are playing the tapu fini just letting yeah. uh, which which i think almost you know a bunch of decks in this in this format will play just because it lets you just easily and cleanly knock out a blacephalon and yes you you know you're still going to get knocked out in, in response but you but you only have a one prizer and you're not committing as many resources to it as you would a blacephalon so great Great in the mirror here. That's what we immediately see uh, Pramawat go for. Yeah, Nature Wave allowing you to attack for one colorless energy for 100 damage if your opponent is an Ultra Beast Pokemon. And uh, Blacephalon, of course, is an Ultra Beast Pokemon and weak to water. And we go back here on Andrew's turn. This this matchup really back and forth getting about getting knockouts basically every turn. We're going to go see an Ultra Space, just a nice, simple, simple stadium. Go ahead and search your deck for an Ultra Beast. And now we have another Welder. I'm going to see it, that Welder attached two energies on the Blacephalon. Oh, fire. Fiery Flint is one of the perfect draws for Andrew here. Just being able to get the rest of his fire energy out of the deck. And then that turns on the rest of the fire crystal and energy retrieval that he has. Yeah, it's just it's just absolutely huge. It's the consistency of these sort of decks. Just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, and with this, he actually has perfect amount of energies in the hand to actually take the knockout here. Stellar Wishes looks down for the quick ball, just probably for okay. another attacker next turn. Yeah, he does have that Ultra Space in play, of course, but who knows if that's going to last. Looks like he's taking some time to consider, do I want to take a Crystal, something that can kind of get me more ahead in the game, or do I need to just take a quick ball and make sure that I have an attacker prepped and ready for the next turn? Taking some time to consider here before it, Looks like he's going to decide on the quick ball. Of course, this matchup is a yeah. very, very important match. One of the most important matches these players have played in their lives. Just a lot to prove here. A lot on the line. There's the quick ball. There's the energy attachment. This is a scary board to have, though. Just Blacephalon and Jirachi in play. And remember, this whole match is the last match the one of these guys will actually play in this tournament. Absolutely. One player is going to be eliminated here. The other is going to move on to the losers finals. Michael does have a lot of cards in hand as well as a welder. So he'll be able to get an attacker set up this turn. You see a card in Michael's hand that can really swing things too is that Blacephalon GX. Of course, we've been talking about all game how these players are trading prizes back and forth. And just, you know, eventually you are going to run out of resources, right? You run out of welders, you run out of fire energies. But that Blacephalon can often be used to take the last prize if you manage to sustain that momentum without many resources. Just a burst GX, flip your GX counter and win the game. Yeah, that's really just the end game goal for this deck in general. Uh if you can't just take a bunch of big knockouts in a row. And, and here we see the, the welder. welder finally. Two energy back on the Blacephalon. And look at you just you have so many cards in hand. What do you discard with Fiery Flint? Looks like we're going to go ahead and get rid of Flint and Ultra Space. Reloading the hand with four fire energy. That's not too just bad. Uh, again, Michael does have a ton of access to energy in his hand along with that fire crystal and energy retrieval. So energy is not the the part that he's missing right now. So I don't even no, no, see actually, a way to actually retreat. Does he have a way to no. get this? He needs to stellar wish for a switch or a skateboard right here. And there's the switch. Okay, there he finds it. That That is very good for Prem. He needs to keep up this momentum. He cannot. He is a, currently ahead in the prize trade and can't really can't really let uh, Andrew get ahead. We also see one of the differences in their list is that Beast Energy being attached to the active Blacephalon. 
Yeah, just saying, you know, these are actually putting in a lot of work here, dealing 30 more damage if you're an Ultra Beast. So he's only going to have to discard two energy instead of the three. Yeah, it doesn't cost him a fire on either side. You know, doesn't doesn't it means he doesn't have to commit a fire energy to the active or discard one. All right, and we're back on Andrew Mahone here. We yeah, see he does have Cephalon GX. I believe that was just the last uh, option he could take in his deck. I right, just wants to thin those decks out, deck, but thin that deck out so we can hit the welder more easily. We finally see the heat factory come down for Andrew. It is desperation time, and he needs to get an attack this turn. And he still does not want to commit that Oracorio G. Actually, so he's just considering stellar wishing here. Does he find the welder? He does. Oh. Again, uh, these Stellar Witches have been putting in work. The fourth card has always seemed to have been the exact card that Andrew needs. And wow, that was really important here. Again, he just ca he cannot afford to fall behind here. He needs to keep up the pressure, keep up the aggression. And with this yeah, and, again, and switch in hand, we'll be able to find the knockout here. I really love the patience that Andrew has shown uh, in not playing the Oracorio GX and just opening himself up to the the one boss's orders that Michael Pramwant actually plays. Uh, this deck usually only plays Welder, but Pram's like, all right, I'm going to surprise you with that one boss's orders. Maybe I can just take that two prizes easily. Yeah, definitely. Just a really heads up play by Mahone. We're going to start things off with a Welder here. He does have the energy retrieval, but no more energy besides that. Great catcher could be something of note here. Uh, just maybe even trying to take out that Oracorio GX and then finishing it off with a burst GX, but no discards that Blacephalon GX just as I'm talking here. That is not the plan. Tapu Fini is where it's at. When you don't have the energy, okay. you'll need one. Exactly. Just he's a little light on energy, so just deciding I'm gonna, you know, I welded to this Placephalon, I'm gonna leave that up, and then I'm just gonna attack you with this Tapu Fini here. Yeah, and you two putting the welder back on top. And there we go. Nature wave for one colorless energy takes down another prize for Andrew here. So now it is two to two prizes, but it's looking like with the way the turns have gone, Andrew might be able to pull it out. Granted, Michael Man, does have a ton of cards in his hand. I think the next turn is going to be really, it's going to really decide the game in one way or another because uh, Michael Premwatt, you know, the players are tied at two prizes, but Michael Premwatt does have a two prize Pokemon on the board. And we know that Andrew Mahone has a great catcher in his hand. However, we've talked a lot about Blacephalon GX. And Michael, if Michael can go down to one prize, he'll be able to burst. Look at all this energy just to. So an embarrassment of riches here. So this game yeah, is coming down strategy. to the end here, and it's going to be right down to the wire. All right. Well, there's one thing that Michael has, and that is energy. Dance of the Tribute here. Uh, it has been the, the thing that has set apart at least the hand difference for Michael. He's had access to that the entire game. Meanwhile, Andrew's not even opted to play his down. We do see right, well, another we do Tapu Fini hit the board. We see a welder, so that means we will have an attack off this turn, although I think Michael is, again, missing a way to get out of the active spot. This is another reason I like the way Andrew built his deck, just because he also has an extra avenue in Scoop Up Net. Yeah, Scoop Up Net is just so huge for the Jirachi deck. Definitely kind of the conventional way to play um dex with Dirachi here and it may end up punishing pram that he started not to we we do see he has that kind of potential boss's order play with the type of fini but again no way to move the Jirachi. so he's just got a welder and, yeah, and hope well, that he can find only has one switch to escape board in the deck and does not find it and this is the awkward part about playing this kind of deck too is something like the dene gx is useless here. You do not want to discard all of your fire energy. Those are your resources. Those are your damage. And I think, yeah, and he's going to have to go ahead and concede. Yeah, Michael wow. Framelot there conceding. Andrew Mahone going up a game. That shows you just how important. I mean, uh, Premier Watt does not know 
that Andrew can KO the Oracorio, right? But he's just saying, oh, I can't take a knockout this turn. I have to concede because I just cannot afford to fall behind in the price trade. I know you won't play a two price uh, Pokemon, and I know that I'm just going to lose this game. So he has to scoop it up despite having 20 cards in his hand. Yeah, well, we don't even know if Andrew had the game on the next turn. We saw that great catcher but and the welder on the top of the deck, but he had all of his energies in the discard pile. So he needed to draw a bunch of resources off that welder. And here we go into game two here. All right, game two. Michael Pramwat playing for his tournament life here. Cannot afford to lose this game and stay in the Invitational. Uh both of these players having only two prize Pokemon in their opening hand to start with, but Andrew having the one of the Dene GX to start. That's not what you want to see, especially against the Cramorant V, which its main job is to take out the Dene GX. Yeah, wow. Not kind of a predator and prey type of situation with this start from both players. We start on Andrew Mahone here. Quick Ball is going to find a Jirachi. He's just going to have to pay to retreat. Not so big of a deal when you have fire crystals, of course. Yeah, you know, but... Speaking of fire crystal... Fire crystal is all right to maybe have you play welder next turn, but you already have those in your hand. You don't need it, and scoop up net might net you another Jirachi later on, but man, this is not a good hand for Andrew here. Yeah, no Blacephalon, no Intrepid Sword. We're just going back to Michael Pramwat with the with the Dedenne on the bench and that Cramorant. They're just looking, eyeing down that Dedenne. Yeah, uh, and Michael probably going to opt to get his own Dedenne GX here. His hand is not really offering much in terms of actually playability. Uh, could opt for... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe something like it's, Jirachi. But yeah, Dedenne seems like the best choice. It's an interesting choice here. He does have the, a way to find the Jirachi and then a skateboard to... Or a skateboard or just manually attached to the Cramorant. But I think he's just saying, you know, I want to take advantage here. Putting this Jirachi... Or putting this Dedenne, rather, on the board is is risky. But I just feel like I need to start pushing here. And that's exactly yeah, what he actually, does. A skateboard on the active Dedenne change. He pram uh discard the other two prize Pokemon. He does not want that liability again. Another thing that can come that has been a really big factor in this tournament and in it can be in this matchup is the um is the Mew that Pram just got rid of with the quick ball there can prevent any kind of Cramorant shenanigans and of course in the peak around matchups prevents a big tag bolt as well. And it's looking like Michael did not draw anything. He needed some fire energies and some welder, but it's looking like a quick ball for a retreat into a Jirachi is the best play he has available to him. Yeah, so we, we, we thought that Mahone stumbled, but now we're coming back to Pramstern, and he stumbles as well. He oh, does man. have a welder. Welder, but I think there's only one fire in the discard, if any. So yeah, here's the boss's orders to kind of stop Andrew from a free Stellar Wish. And oh, there yeah, was two of, in there. Just a disruptive bit there. We see that Pram almost plays a Fire Crystal, but then double checks how many are in and wisely plays a Retrieval just to be able to get more back with the Crystal later. And now we're back on Andrew Mahone's turn. This time the Crystal is going to only find two. Oh, yeah, that's a powerful wonder. Welder into the Dene GX. Not what you want to see. It's really just playing a Sharon for three cards. Yeah, we, we end up you end up seeing that a lot when you have an awkward start with this deck. Is just kind of the the one energy kind of pitiful welder there. Not on a Pokemon that you really want. Not building. Not really advancing your board state at all. Just drawing you cards. But sometimes it's what you have to do. Yeah, well, it did net a quick ball for Andrew here, and eyes down the Zashi and V just to draw some more cards, figuring. I'll find a Blacephalon next turn. I just need more cards in my hand. And he already has the Welder in hand, so the Stellar Wish is going to find a Fiery Flint. Much more kind of important card, both thinning out the deck and loading up with these energies. This is one of the great things about uh, the Blacephalon deck is that you, you, know, you never want to have 
turns like this where you're not really acting a whole lot, but you can't afford to find your Blacephalons on the very last turn. There's no evolving. You have you have the route of attacking with it immediately with the welders. Like you can really afford to intrepid sword early in the game. Look at that. His hand is stacked for next turn, and I think we'll finally see things start to get going in this match. A match where it's usually just knockout after knockout. Uh, the first few turns, players have kind of just like been missing at least one key card out of getting a good start. Yeah, not the best Stellar Wish there uh, with the Jirachi, but we are going to see the Welder load up this Cramorant. We're going to see Cramorant probably take a knockout on that uh, on that Dedenne that's been sitting there all game. Yeah, a good quick two prizes, but then the Cramorant will just give up two prizes more if Andrew has exactly what he needs. Spitshot does discard all the fire energy too, so unlike Blacephalon where it would kind of just all you need to get him is back in your hand, Cramorant V requires a welder every turn to be able to spit shot. Yeah, absolutely. And very similar to game one, we're seeing Pram take the first prizes, take a double prize knockout, but of course with a two prizer of his own. So not really winning the prize exchange there. Yeah, and here Here's we go. Welder. welder. And again, I just love seeing all of the retrieval cards in Andrew's deck. You almost guarantee you're going to draw at least two of them. And when two of them equals uh, 250 damage, that's not too shabby. Yeah, but we see the Stellar Wish here finding yet another Welder again. This matchup and this deck entirely is just so much about repeating the Welders, recurring the Welders, and making sure that you can Welder on almost every turn. So after some consideration, he does decide to go with the Welder. Yeah, it does have quite a few options. Can burn a few resources to maybe get a few more Stellar Wish off, but I don't think that's what you want to do here. Uh, Going to get the five in hand. Only will need to discard four to actually take the knockout here with Fireball Circus. And so it's a pretty good turn here for Andrew, able to even up the prize trade, but he's the one with an attacker in play. Yep, so here is the knockout. Four prizes remaining for both players here. And now, like you said, um, Mahone is the one with the with the attacker in play. So now it's really on Pram. He should be able to respond here, but he just needs to make sure he is able to because you rely so much. We saw we saw Pram Watt scoop the entire game when he couldn't get a knockout last time. And Missing this Welder, Stellar Wish does Stellar not wish. Wow. find Welder. And with the hand that Michael is forced to have right now, it is not looking good. And I think this is the first time we're going to see uh, an attacker actually stay on the board. And Pram's actually just thinking about conceding again. But that's tournament life here for him. Yeah, wow. Is this is not what you want to be a fan of Pram. Not at all. Pram Watch is having trouble kind of streaming these knockouts together. See, I think I think uh, the problem for Pram is he usually loses two times before he starts get going in a tournament. Yeah, that is true. That is true. If we're any fans of Pram, you you know about the, you know, well, the first few rounds are for learning how your deck works. You know, you got to read all the cards. You might take a few losses, but then you're going to sweep. But in this double elimination invitational bracket, of course, there is no time for two losses. Not a whole lot of time for learning. You just have to be prepared and ready to go. But yeah, this is not looking good for Michael here. And looking at Andrew's hand, there, yeah, he does not want to have any more of it and concedes the match. Uh, Andrew wins 2-0 against Michael Pramwat there in loser's semis. Moves on to the loser's finals, trying to make that magical run. And that, yeah, that's just an incredible, incredible game. I think that teaches you a couple of things. First of all, it shows how important the Blacephalon deck, how much it relies on just streaming those welders. And again, Pramwa bringing kind of a non-conventional list here. Um, who knows, you know, who knows to say whether the, whether the